Today I want to talk with you about organizational patterns and structure of papers and essays. The first thing I want you to realize is that when they're talking about organization, they're simply talking about the order or the pattern of the information, the, the content of a paper or a document. Now basically, you have three choices with this. The first is to put the information in chronological order or in a time sequence. The second is to use a spatial ordering and your third is to use a logical pattern or order of some kind. We're going to talk about these in a little more detail uh, but first um, I want you to realize that it is the subject matter and the purpose for which the information is being prepared that determine what that organizational pattern is going to be. You might uh, remember in an earlier uh, presentation on the writing process we talked about how important uh, subject and purpose was to um, developing your information. It not only does that but it determines the organizational pattern that you use. And to help you with this, you should ask yourself a couple of questions, uh, such as, are you telling a story, which would, of course, then be chronological, or are you giving a description uh, that would be spatial uh, order of some kind, or are you trying to be persuasive, in which case you would, of course, need to use a logical pattern of some kind. The first one I want to talk about, then, is chronological ordering or time sequence. This one's pretty straightforward. It's where the information simply goes from the first event that happens and is told until the last event that happens. The examples of this are things that we see all the time in everyday life. Uh, stories are chronological in order, uh, movies, news reports, um, eyewitness accounts, Anything that is narrative in, in nature, uh, whether it is uh, fictional or true, uh, tends to follow the chronological order uh, when it's presented, from the first event to the last. The next uh, possibility is to use spatial order. When we're talking about spatial order, we're talking about three-dimensional space. We um, perceive the world as a three-dimensional world, three-dimensional space. So spatial order is when we are talking about three-dimensional or a directional description of an object, uh, a person, or a place. So if, for example, you're describing an object and you describe it from uh, the bottom to the top, that would be spatial order. Or if maybe you're describing a room and you go from left side to right side, that would be a spatial order. Also directional things. If you tell me, how do I get from here to the next town? That would be directional and also would move through physical space. Uh, examples of this, uh, well, there's several. Some we already mentioned, front to back, top to bottom, here to there, east to west, north to south, inside to outside, you get the idea. Uh, spatial order is any three-dimensional sequence in which something is described. Your third choice would of course then be logical order. Now there are many patterns possible in logical order depending on what your purpose is. That is, why are you uh, describing whatever it is you're describing. Um, perhaps your description uh, goes from the most general information to the most spe specific information. Or say um, you are putting together uh, an argument and you go from your least important point to your most important point. Or perhaps in reverse. All of these would follow a logical pattern of some kind. Uh, also things like smallest to biggest, first to last, or any of these actually in reverse would be a logical order of some kind. 
The other thing I want you to realize is that these organizational patterns can be used together and often are. Uh, an example of that would be uh, chronological patterns such as uh, narratives or stories. Uh, they might include descriptions within them and the descriptions would be in a spatial order of some kind like if um, a certain place is being described perhaps a, um, a room or something like that. Um, also chronological patterns uh, also by nature are logical because <clears throat> they go from the first event to the last event. As well a spatial description that maybe describes something from the smallest to the largest for example, that would be also a logical pattern. So the patterns can be used together. Now the next thing that I want to talk about here when we're putting together information is uh, the basic structure of a document. Uh, of course you know that that's the introduction, body, and conclusion. But I want to look at those uh, just a little bit closer. Uh, first of all, of course, is introductions. Uh, the primary purpose, of course, of an introduction is to just to introduce your, your subject or your topic. But there are other things an introduction can do as well. It may also state your position or your opinion on a topic, for example. In that case, it would be your thesis. Uh, it may also provide basic background information about the topic. Uh, this is very common with certain types of information. It may also indicate the documents organizational pattern. If, for example, um, it states in the introduction but that I'm going to uh, explain a procedure to you on how to do something, then of course that would uh, tell me that that's going to be in a chronological pattern. Uh, also, it's important that you catch the reader's interest uh, in your introduction if the best way you can. Uh, actually, if you introduce a topic that is of some interest anyway, it'll, it should help catch the reader's interest. The next part of uh, structure, of course, in a document is the body. And this is the main part of, uh, of any document or any paper. And basically what the body does is it presents the details of your information uh, in the order uh, that you set it up. The first paragraph presents the first reason or the uh, supporting information for whatever your topic is or whatever your position on that topic is. Then each of the paragraphs that follow in the body present either another reason or another piece of information uh, with details that carries forth the story or the idea or the argument that you're working on in a paragraph by paragraph pattern. Then with the conclusion, um, with a conclusion, people sometimes struggle with this. It's like they don't know uh, when to conclude or how to conclude. There's something to this that'll help you. If you remember uh, also from the last presentation on uh, the writing process, uh, you conclude a document when your purpose has been fulfilled. If, for example, your purpose was to explain something, well, when you have explained it, then it's time to conclude. When, uh, let's say, for example, you were presenting an argument, these are your reasons for the argument, all right, and, and your purpose was to convince me. Well, when you've done your best to convince me and you've used all of your points of argument, then it's time to conclude. Now in a conclusion, the final paragraph should restate or remind your audience, your reader, of your topic and also of your position on that topic if you took one. There are some other things it might do as well. It might mention your strongest points briefly. Don't re-argue them, just mention them or perhaps summarize your thoughts or it may uh, request action from your reader in some form or another. The conclusion is to basically be a wrap-up of whatever the document was presenting. 
So what we want to take away from this is these things. In organization, we have three choices. Either the, or the pattern will be chronological, which is a time sequence, spatial, which is usually always description, or logical, or a pattern that combines uh, two or more together. The structure of papers, of course, is introduction, body, conclusion. You need to introduce the topic. The body gives our, our points and our details, our information, and the conclusion wraps it up. That's what it is we need to remember out of this. I'll talk with you later.